Hello everyone. In this podcast, we will ask few questions from Dr. Saurav about the questions which are asked by the FACO trainees who come to Nandali my hospital for their FACO training. Dr. Saurav, can you tell us about the FACO training program at Nandali my hospital? Yeah. So, uh, in Nandali my hospital, we have got many teaching programs apart from postgraduate teaching. We also do a lot of short term training. And uh, particularly our interest is in cataract surgical training, which includes PECO as well as SICS and then some complex cases, secondary IOLs. Apart from that, nowadays, of course, we are training uh, them in trabeclectomy and screen surgeries as well. So, we have built a good team of trainers. So, it is not just uh, two of us who are training uh, our fellows. Uh, we have very good uh, consultants who are experienced uh, surgeons themselves. And they are very passionate about imparting their knowledge with those uh, who are visiting our training center. Uh, we also have very good infrastructure in the in terms of uh, like we have got high end microscopes because uh, I feel that uh, good visualization is very important when you are learning new surgery because uh, you know when you see well you can do well you can learn the nuances well. Also, we as trainers can see what the surgeon is doing and can find out mistakes and correct them. So that is one thing which uh, I feel that uh, we are blessed with, with good microscopes. Apart from that, I have uh, over the years, I have collected FACO machines from different companies. Uh, that's because every machine is probably slightly different from one another. And some of the surgeons who want to go back and practice on a particular machine, so it's uh, better for them if they learn here as well on the same or similar machine. So, you know, for them transition to their private practice or in their, you know, place of work becomes easier. So my first question is, if I'm a beginner FACO surgeon, how many cases do I require to learn so that I can do independent surgeries? Oh, that is the first thing probably for any learner which comes to their mind like, you know, what should I target? I should I, should I target a particular number of cases in order to become independent surgeon? So, of course, uh, the learning curve of each surgeon will vary. But what I'm telling is, uh, uh, you know, a general average surgeon. So, if I, because we have trained almost probably 400 plus surgeons, right, uh, from so many years. So, for a, a regular surgeon who comes to us without probably no experience or very little experience of cataract surgery to do a you know reasonably well or to understand the basics of cataract surgery takes around 40 to 50 cases so by 40 to 50 cases i would say that the surgeon will be able to do uh, almost all steps on his or her own but after 40 to 50 cases the surgeon will still require supervision because there will be uh, you know, places or steps where the surgeon may not be able to negotiate that particular step or, and requires a supervision. Now, when the surgeon usually does 80 to 100 cases, and here I'm talking about regular cases, uncomplicated or not complex cases, regular cases. When the surgeon completes around 80 to 100 cases, what I see is that now they are good in decision making. They know if they get into certain kind of trouble or they can you know, analyze or they can anticipate a trouble and uh, they can change their way or change the approach and can get away with it. So probably after 80 to 100 cases, I would say for regular cases, uh, most of the surgeons can do independent surgery. Okay. But after 80 to 100 cases, still, I would say uh, the surgeon may not be as confident or, you know, as uh, I would say adept to tackling complex cases or complex situations. Now, in order to uh, do complex cases, it is not just the numbers that matter. Of course, numbers matter, but what goes on in these 80 to 100 cases that the surgeon initially does is also very important. Uh, as you said that uh, we're beginner surgeon, okay? But we also get few surgeons who have learned FACO before they come to us, but they are getting into trouble a lot of times. So that's why they want to refine their technique. And this is our experience that if somebody has learned initial surgery by probably a wrong technique or they were not supervised well, they learn bad habits. And now, once uh, they are into those bad habits, it's very difficult to unlearn. 
and most of the time because of this they get into you know sticky situation they get into more complications so i think it is important to unlearn for them so for those surgeons it may take longer time to learn how to do complex procedures as compared to someone who is beginner not done any cases but now we is learning with a very supervised very step by the approach and every step is analyzed and he or she knows how to go ahead after every step so in that scenario if that surgeon has done say for example done under our supervision around 80 to 100 cases here definitely the surgeon is you know ready to take on complex cases but even complex cases has its own learning curve so that means if the surgeon has done say 50 70 80 regular cases and he does one hard cut try and he is successful in doing that it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, the surgeon has conquered how to do that so even the complex cases will take its own learning curve okay now this is what i tell most of the surgeons who come to me uh, for only complex cases like that is their request that we are doing regular cases but we cannot do complex cases so teach us how to do complex cases so first thing what we do is that we ask them to do regular cases first because most of the times the you know problem lies in their basics so while approaching a complex case what we have is we have limited uh, you know margin of error that means for a regular case we can do a little bit of error in the steps still can get away with it but with complex cases that margin of error is limited so that's why in the regular cases you should have your basic steps perfect not 90% it should be 100% perfect then you can do complex cases i would say quite easily okay but if your basic steps are not yet defined i would say that first let's do few cases regular cases let's refine that technique and then take on the complex cases that's how, what the our process is so uh, just to summarize the numbers 40 to 50 cases you can you understand how to approach a cataract now it's not a new surgery or new step for you anymore but you cannot do independent surgery 80 to 100 cases you can do most of the regular cataract surgical cases independently okay and now you want to become completely independent surgeon probably i would say 200 plus surgeries Okay, will give you a much better experience, and you will be much uh, fluent surgeon for regular cases. And for complex cases, I, I, again I said it has its own learning curve. So more regular cases you do, more complex cases you do, you become better. Right? So my next question is: I want, I have decided that I will come to your institute for the training. How can I prepare for that? Yeah. So uh, that's a very good question. I, in fact, I would say that. someone asked me that how you are I, i want to you know i want to prepare for the course that you are going to give so i think that is a good step forward that means the surgeon knows how to plan and that is very important and uh, that is very important even when he comes here and starts uh, you know learning here because every surgery if the surgeon analyzes that will you know shorten the learning curve and surgeon become better so we have got Two trainees who keep notes of each and every case uh, in their notebook, in their logbook, and that really helps. Also, analyzing those videos once they go back home or go back to their room, and they can watch the videos and they can, you know, analyze these things. So before you come here, I would say we have got a very good handbook which uh, we have already published. Uh, so that handbook is very good because it has it's, it's not just a written book, but it has video links. Uh, to various videos which are on our YouTube channel. Of course, that YouTube channel is there, but many times, uh, you know, these uh, trainees ask me like, where to start uh, watching a YouTube channel, whether I, we should watch randomly or not. So that handbook is a good guide. So it starts from basics to complex. So it gives you a idea, a general idea about preparing for the course as well, preparing, understanding those steps as well. I think that is the easiest way to prepare. for uh, you know a training course uh, with us and if i am already a busy practitioner but i want to come for complex cases how much time should i take out for this yeah so uh, there will be few surgeons who are doing good regular cases and they might be getting kind of uh, you know 
they might be feeling difficulty when there is a complex case or a complex situation and they want to get out of uh, you know that trouble and of course because they are already practicing they may not be able to take out much of time so probably uh, there we can customize the course for them for a week two weeks as per uh, their needs and we can focus on their their areas of interest where they are lacking and uh, we can do that for them so uh, my last question is uh, as a trainee, I have trained a few times and I am doing the routine regular surgeries. But still, I don't feel confident enough to handle the complication in my private practice. Yes. So, uh, I think uh, it's not a very rare situation. That is the first thing. Like, if you are uh, you have undergone training at uh, in your fellowship or your residency or even after that probably, uh, I have come to some institutes and got further trained and uh, when you are back to either your practice or job where you are on your own, that means you have the responsibility for the patient. That sometimes is quite troubling to few surgeons who get into difficult situation where there are higher chances of complication in their practice and uh, that kind of, of course, uh, you know, there will be pressure on them to operate further because they want the next case to be perfect but again they might have more difficulty so that kind of becomes a vicious cycle and there are few reasons for uh, this to happen one of the thing uh, i would say is uh, the basic training as i said earlier also that if the surgeon is well trained in basics then probably the surgeon will not land up with this kind of situation in uh, uh, his or her job or uh, you know in profession. So probably they should think about whether their basic training was correct or not and whether they should revisit. it. That is the first thing. Uh, second thing uh, is something to do with the mental aptitude also or I would say personality also. Because some surgeons I know they take a lot of stress or they carry the guilt or they carry the burden for a very long time. So even after probably they have done quite good number of good cases with good outcomes and probably they get one complication and they become so afraid of you know operating the next patient that now they start hesitating you know, when they are going to operating room. So tomorrow is the operating room list and uh, they start feeling little anxious like this appears very difficult case. This So every case they feel that it's very complex and difficult which they would have done easily unless they were in that you know mental space so in that case i think they should uh, ask for help with senior supervisors and even these training programs help because uh, when they are in training program there is someone you know looking after them and they can get out of this kind of vicious cycle uh, they should speak about these things also with their friends or their mentors so that uh, you know once the confidence is boosted you know they can do much better. Uh, so the personality is also very important. You have a very good aptitude or attitude towards uh, you know learning. So they know that few complications may occur, but they should improve. They will do better. Of course, they will always keep the patient's uh, you know important patient's health in mind, and they will do the best for the patient. And that is the right answer. So every surgeon will have complication. Uh, there will be uh, no surgeon who has zero complication. But to get out of that and be better, that is something we should all must learn. So I think two things. So think about whether your basic training is right or not, or you should work on that. And second thing is the personality, that you should work on your mental attitude and emotional quotient also to work better in such situations. That's a very good advice. On the same note, I would like to request you to watch the video of Dr. Saurabh on how to handle the complications as a surgeon. It is available in his YouTube channel. So, uh, it was a good podcast, I feel, Dr. Saurabh. Yes. And I feel it answered a lot of questions which were there in the minds of Echo Training. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nidhi. And uh, of course, uh, if you like this podcast, you know, do subscribe to our channel also. Write comments on what other topics you would like us to discuss. Because this, uh, you know, learning surgery is a very long process. It has so many facets to it. So we'll definitely put up more podcast concepts uh, subjects.
Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Come, come, come. Ready. Okay, ready. Itla talu Done, done. Tini talu. Okay. Yes. So that continuously talu karai the. नहीं 